Welcome to the What's Our Order podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Croner. I'm here with my co-host, Alec Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead, hit that follow, subscribe, like, bell notification buttons. Tell a friend about us. Uh, tell a family member about us. Tell a more. Tell a crusader. There you go. Uh, Alec was much nicer about that than I was going to be. <laughs> I was going to say tell a moronic British friend, but that <laughs> crusader works. Uh, yeah, so... We're back into the what is it? The third week? It is the third week of thirty, uh, ninety minutes or less. Jeez, I wish it was thirty minutes 30 or less. Minutes or less, we'd be doing Chaplin films. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> More to talk about with those than this one. Nah, ninety minutes or less. Uh, we, before we get into the movie, though, let's talk about our lovely sponsor, Manscaped. Um, we've l- loved having their continued sponsorship, uh, presenting our episodes for us. We really appreciate it, and yeah, so like sizzle alert it's really fucking hot outside and this summer let the only thing smoking at your barbecue be the grill not your grooming game get ready for the ultimate cookout season with manscaped whether you're flipping burgers or cannonballing into the pool make sure your meat looks neat with the performance package 5.0 ultra uh fire up your grooming routine and keep it cool with manscaped head to manscaped.com and use code the verdict for 20 percent off and free shipping uh let's make this summer sizzle for all the right reasons like, yeah, they, dude, I'm telling you, their copies just get better and better. I mean, I guess yeah, you have do. to have you have to have good copy to sell. I mean, you really got to. Yeah, you really got to go for it. Yeah. And I just love that we advertise it. when I was a kid and these movies have made me feel like a kid again because they're all old. Um, but like. I, they didn't advertise shit like this, like one back then you didn't. We, you didn't do that kind of grooming. At least you certainly didn't talk about it, but uh, nowadays it's a good thing. So, yeah, I mean, Manscaped, it is what it is, and we love them. So go get your 20% off and free shipping with the code THEVERDICT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using the code the verdict. Manscaped, the perfect way to get your patties sizzling hot this summer. Um, yeah, so thanks, Manscaped. We appreciate you. Looking forward to many, many more episodes presented by you guys. So let's jump into this week's movie, Alec. It is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It was released. Uh It was released May 25th, 1975. It was written by Graham Chapman, John Cleese, and Eric Idle. It was directed by Terry Gilliam. Terry Jones. It stars Graham Chapman, John Cleese, Eric Idle, Terry Gilliam, Terry Jones, Michael Palin, Connie Booth, Carol Cleveland, Neil Innes, B. Duffel, and Rita Davies. <laughs> it's about King Arthur and his knights of the round table who embark on a surreal, low budget search for the Holy Grail, encountering many very silly obstacles. Um, Here's the funny part. Is this a you pick? This was a Matson pick, right? This was a Matson pick, but one that I actually support. (laughs) Yeah, you would. This is a Matson pick, and Matson's not even here to talk about it. He's in. He's stuck in Hawaii. (laughs) Stuck. Like I feel bad because he did tell us somebody got COVID, which has kept him there till like extra time. But I'm like, dude, you're fucking stuck in Hawaii. Stuck. Stuck in Siberia, maybe. Yeah. No shit. (laughs) Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but anyway, so we wish him well-ish and hope whoever's sick gets better so they can come back to the real world and not just be living in Hawaii at this point. Um, but yeah, to him pick. He did it to piss me off. And it fits and it the worked. theme. And it, you know, it worked. I will say this, though. I haven't watched this movie purposefully, very intentionally, for two decades, probably um maybe more and it was one of those movies that throughout my childhood and adulthood like it's constantly quoted talked about like and it just burns my hide every time it happens but i will say at 43 years old i did find this movie a little funnier than i had the last time i watched it 
and I started to understand. And there's certain quotes that because of how much I loathed this movie as a young man and, and a teenager that I didn't realize that I was quoting because I thought the shit was funny as friends, like the runaway shit. Like we used to do that all the time. Run away! Run away! Like that was, <laughs> we constantly did that. And, and I don't think I ever associated it with this movie because I didn't, it's not, it's like, I never quoted it. I, you know, I hated it. Um, but yeah, like I did find myself begrudgingly admitting that I was laughing more than I expected to. Cause I went in going, I fucking hate this. I don't want to watch this. Why am I watching this? And then I watched it and I chuckled two or three times. And that was way more than I've ever laughed at this movie. So I have to do this because Matt's in the wood if he was here, but oh, I'm God. sorry, JJ. Your mother was a hamster and your father <laughs> smelled of elderberries <laughs> for that response. Uh, I, I will say, so I ad- I think this movie is hilarious. Sure. Um, I have. N- I don't think I've ever experienced a more polarizing movie, though. True. There, there are two types of people. The ones who love this movie and think it's perfect and the ones who can't stand it yeah um and i'm gonna blame your mislike of it on your scottish heritage because this is there you go the the this is the archetype for british humor true like 100 percent. this is british humor at its finest and you got some deep scottish roots yes so i'm blaming that (laughs) that's fair that's fair well and it's even worse because it's like 70s 80s british humor like we have a place here that we love to go eat that's called Little Taste of Britain. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. They're from England and the you know the area. I say England. They're from Great Britain because they're from all over. But so <laughs> we go and they have 1980s British television on. And I'm like, oh, this shit sucks so bad. <laughs> like, how do you fuckers find this funny? But anyway, like, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty authentic joint, but. So then yeah. are you like opposed to Monty Python stuff in general? Like you don't like Monty Python stuff or is this just much? A bit much? No, I, I'm not a huge, I don't, I life of Brian, I find okay. hilarious, but that's because of my, I think that's because of my lack of religious beliefs. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> the, the fact that I like, I find it hilarious that a person is walking around getting confused for Jesus. Like, and his name's Brian. Like that shit's and then throughout like all of the comedy of errors that goes throughout that movie. So if I had to pick one that I can say that I enjoy, I'm gonna air quote that. Uh it's life of Brian. Outside of that, it's all sketch comedy in a long ass form that I'm like, I get annoyed after a while. But that's I- British humor. That is, but I love pretty much anything with Monty Python attached to it. Like some of their sketch comedy skits are just have me in stitches. Sure. Um, like there's one that they do, and this is going a little bit off topic, but the argument one, like pay for an argument. Okay. You got to YouTube it. It is hilarious. Okay. Um, but I mean, I can't even remember the first time I watched this movie. It was, and I think, I, I don't quote me on this, but I think it was with Javier. Uh, and this you'll know this is a straight up Javier flick oh for sure and so I I mean this is one of the few movies that we've done on the podcast where I have the DVD mm. and so I pop that sucker in <laughs> um, you know, it feels nice pop that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I giggle throughout for most of it mm. so my biggest beef is the the ending oh for sure and I know why it ends that way, because sure. you said in the intro, low budget, they ran out of fucking money. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's like I'm I'm like, okay, this was clever the way that you pulled this off, but it is so jarring yeah. at the end that it rips me out. Mm-hmm. And it's it's you, you can tell almost that the sketch comedy got away. Yeah, right. The the sketch got away from him. And they didn't know how to really wrap it up. Money was running low. So, you know, fuck it. We're going to just Monty <laughs> Python this shit and cut it. Yeah. And so it's it's like the first 30, 30 or so minutes, I would say, is unmatched in humor. Because you have great bits like the witch. 
Um, yeah. And then you have the, you know, I'm being oppressed little bit in there. <laughs> and it's, I mean, even the the fake grail over the castle. Yeah. Galahad is, is chastity. I mean, this is just such, it's back to back kind of like, oh, this is good. And then it just starts to slide a little bit as they stretch it out. You can kind of tell, not really sure where you want to go with this, how you're going to wrap it up. And then the ending just, I can't stand, <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I get that completely. Because you know me, like I love a good ending, and this one doesn't have an ending, period, let alone a good one. Mm-hmm. So it's like, fuck. I will say so the the I'm being oppressed like that's that bit got me real bad this time like I was I was giggling pretty hard and I think you have to be older you don't have you to ha- be but it, it, I had to be older for that to be funny yeah because yeah because you have to actually listen to what's being said to understand what's happening because on the surface it's just kind of funny you know funny voice going um, you know, digging around in the mud. I, I can't remember who's in the background because they're playing such different roles. Oh, yeah, but I think yeah, it's yeah. Eric Idols in the background, yeah. just having a field day, <laughs> distracting your eye. And so you, you you have to pay attention to what's actually actually being said. Yeah. Um, it, because the the surface comedy is there, but if you pay attention to saying, "Oh, this is actually a little bit intelligent, funny," and you know, at the same time, poking fun at the violence inherent in the system <laughs> yeah yeah well and that's the part like the, when you first they cut to that scene like he's explaining future british politics <laughs> in this like golden age of the round table and i'm like okay that's fucking hilarious and, and then you just listen to him and he's just completely talking in the modern way about the government and how they were feeling especially in the 80s i mean even now but especially in the 80s and 90s like that was a real big deal in britain and so like it's just it's hilarious like i the only thing that was missing is him dropping like a line about the tories or something like that would have yeah. been the only other thing that would have just made me lose my shit but yeah like i that one got me pretty good and then the one you know as a child or as a young man like my sense of humor was even more stupid and crass than it is now. <laughs> so the chastity scene always made me laugh. You know what I mean? Because like, I mean, it's, it's filthy humor. So in my much head, too I'm perilous like, for you, too peril, too, too yeah. much peril. Yeah. I could, I could take a little peril. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're gay. <laughs> well, and the whole time you're like, oh, this poor bastard. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's great. Um, I'm trying to think of what else and here's okay so here's a funny story the the Knights of Knee was my first introduction to this movie like I didn't watch okay. the whole thing I came in I don't remember some friends were watching it and they was like the Knights of Knee and I'm like what the fuck are you watching and they're like you've never seen Holy Grail and I'm like fuck no and then we sat down and watched it and I beat the shit out of them after for making me watch this shit but <laughs> in a playful fun friendly way but I still we I was like you motherfuckers but the Knights of Knee, when we first watched it, like I, it got me because it's so random Stupid. and it's dumb. Just... And I was like, but at the same time, it's it's intelligent too. Like where it's because when you first meet him, you're like, what the fuck? And then they use it to go when they go to get the strawberry. The old me. lady, me. He, yeah, they can't. She's like, like crumbling, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's so fucking hilarious. Like that, just knee is like scary enough. And so me and those friends, we'd run around and be like, <laughs> just randomly fucking screaming <laughs> knee at each other. <laughs> and so, but that, that was my introduction to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So I, that one always makes me nostalgic and laugh, even though now as an adult, it's far less funny than it used to be. Um, especially without my friends around, like this movie's hard for me to watch without someone that mm-hmm. finds it funny. Like, cause I, I just don't in most it's, cases it's that dumb humor yeah but it's so it's it's so many small individual pieces of dumb humor that yeah. some you love and some you hate and it just there's no telling what's gonna hit you next like the the camelot scene right where it's like yeah. dance number 
And if you do like this two minute long dance number, be like, you know what? Let's not go to Camelot. It's a silly place and turn around. <laughs> and I hate that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what are like the, I think it's one of the following scenes coming up close, or maybe it's a little bit before is the Black Knight. Oh, yeah. And I just crack up. <laughs> Fine. We'll call it a draw, right? Yeah. <laughs> no arms, no legs. So stupid, and so dude. It's, it's, it's all stupid. But I know. some resonates with you, some doesn't, and it's there's no telling what. Um, and so you get that kind of knock against the sketch comedy. I, I think for me, there's enough in here that I'm just laughing that yeah. I can, you know, ignore the okay, I know what's coming with the Camelot or the the random animated scenes that you're kind of sitting there going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like am I did I accidentally push a button now I'm watching a different movie um because everything kind of there there's no real scene in the next thing or no explanation um although the one anime scene that does get me is when they're like but then the animator uh oh, yeah, was yeah. like had a heart attack and <laughs> couldn't continue drawing so they were saved yeah <laughs> yeah so dumb well and then the even the opening credits, like the people that wrote these credits quit or we fired them or what. The, and then it comes on. They've been this, also like, been sacked. Yeah. It comes on. And then it's got like these like, it's in like Scandinavian fucking subtitles in it just randomly. You're like, what the fuck? And then it gets all psychedelic and weird. You're like, it's what the am llamas. I watching? <laughs> the so people weird. responsible for the sacking have now been sacked. Yeah. It's so weird. And I will say, too, like, another piece that gets me is the coconut. And not, yes, okay, it's funny when you first see Arthur riding in on the coconut and the dude's behind him. That shit's funny. And then it gets old for me. But what fucking killed me as an adult more than any other scene, and I think as a kid I just didn't find the humor in it, mm -hmm. is the conversation about coconuts and swallows and... <laughs> <laughs> carrying the coat like i was like i had tears running down my face i was laughing so hard and then i love the recall of the swallow throughout like it made so much more sense to African me in a european swallow yeah <laughs> well i love it because there's there's all we all know someone like this sure. first person you meet where you're trying to get to a point and they're hyper focusing on Wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. And you're like, it does shut up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Javier, that's, I mean, <laughs> that, that's not why I'm here. <laughs> Where's your lawyer? It's like, uh, uh, five ounce bird cannot carry a one pound coconut. <laughs> they just get so mad, you don't even care anymore about why the original reason was yeah. that you were there or the original conversation. Well, but, and like, Medieval dude knows the fucking beats per minute of a swallow's wings. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then just starts having a side conversation with his fellow guard. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the hell? Well, an, uh, an African swallow could do it. Well, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> it's not a migratory bird. <laughs> <laughs> or are you suggesting coconuts migrate? <laughs> yeah. That part fucking got me really good really good and so i mean that's part of this i guess my we'll call it an issue with the movie is it starts out so strong yeah like even the opening credits they throw you for a loop but they make you wonder what is this like i'm kind of curious i want to see where it goes next then it starts out just strong and then just progressively gets worse as the movie yeah. goes along and there's little bright moments like uh sir robin's mistrels <laughs> crack up and that's one where you have to like really pay attention to the lyrics because mm -hmm. it's hilarious what they're actually singing. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, oh, a little peak here, a little peak here. And but it just the overall quality goes downhill as soon as it kicks off. Yeah. Which is a bummer because most of the stuff I really enjoy, but it's right about the time where you get to Tim the wizard. Yeah. That I'm like, okay, this let let's go. It's yeah, it's, move along. Movie's done. Movie's done. Yeah. I I when I started to lose it and I was like, fuck, I'm so done in this, this time was the, with Lancelot and the marriage, like the, the son getting held captive. Like 
I found it funny, like when he goes barreling through, like because he misunderstands that it's not a damsel, it's the sun, and he's murking everybody through the way. Then he gets up and goes, Oh fuck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what the hell are you doing? That part made me giggle, but from then on out, like I just go, This is so overwritten that it's not funny. Like it's convoluted. It's I'm like, ugh. And then from then on, like I'm so disappointed in it that I'm like, I have a hard time getting back. So it had me for a little while, much longer than it's ever had me before. And then, like I said, in that moment, it lost me. I was like, meh. But yeah, I mean, for for that scene in particular, uh, I've I've I don't know if I've ever really liked it so much. But it's more of it's hard to say because I like everybody in it except for John Cleese. Which and is weird. He, and weird because he's the main part of this scene, but it's everything that's happening when he's off screen, right? Mm -hmm. Like the whole writing the note while not paying attention, watching the guards tied together and oh. out the window, or the guards going back and forth with, wait a minute. So we stay here, but don't let him out. And <laughs> yeah, that, that whole conversation is more enjoyable to me than Lancelot. Sure, and it's John Cleese, and yeah. John Cleese is kind of uh, should should be the main focal point, the main humor, and everything like that. But I could do without him completely. Yeah, which is yeah. odd because he's usually like he usually carries any Monty Python film for me. Like he's funny in he's everything a funny except guy, a really Monty. funny guy. But yeah, in in that particular moment, I'm like, yeah. And it starts with this like his horse getting shot. With the arrow and the message, message for you, look, my lord. And then yeah. like, like hit the whole back and forth. I was like, okay, we've done the dead, not dead thing before. Like, I might pull through. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, this is too on the nose with the Black Knight thing. Like, it just, okay, you've done it before. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, another one that like I don't enjoy, never have enjoyed, didn't enjoy this is the fucking rabbit. Like, why is that funny? Like people talk about the fucking rabbit all the time and how that's hilarious. And I'm like, it's really not though. Like I I think it's the lead up to it with the holy mm -hmm. hand grenade of Antioch. Fair. You know, Fair. and that's another joke that they kind of replay a little bit is the three, one, two, five, three, my yeah. lord. <laughs> Three, <laughs> and even later it comes back with the riddles. He'll ask you five riddles. Three, my lord. Three riddles. Once you answer the five questions or three questions, yeah. so that's another one. But I don't, because I've heard the same thing, and I have a little bit similar of a thing where the rabbit is it 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 doesn't fit or make sense. But everybody's like, "Oh, this is great." And yeah. I, I have to wonder if it's kind of the lead up to the rabbit, mm. and then the you know response like. It's a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and but it the whole kind of thing again is a, another one that I kind of agree with you is it's not the best skit, not noticeable yeah. at all. Or it doesn't deserve the credit that it gets for it. Yeah, because people that's one of the things that like people talk about. Like there's a handful of things with this movie that people you can guarantee they're gonna talk about. And the rabbit's one of them. And I'm always like, it, it's gotta be because it's so shocking like and out of the blue and the murder rabbit like i understand why the concept they thought oh this will be funny mm -hmm. but it just doesn't work for me in practice or you know in the practical application of it but people love it and i'm like but i don't why like i just don't okay whatever <laughs> yeah it's i i get what you're saying about it because it, it's funny but it's not that funny yeah and it's, it's more of just a real quick, like, oh, okay, that's funny. The monster's a rabbit. It's not like, hold your sides, busting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the rabbit's the monster. I love it. Oh, Type geez. of an attitude to it. That's funny. Um, I'm going to pull my inner mat. I'm going to channel my inner mats in here and Ooh. hit you with some trivia. Okay, let's see if I got it. Can you name three bands that help contribute to this movie's budget? three bands yeah musical groups who who used album uh funds funds they earned by from albums to help 
com- <laughs> contribute to this movie's budget. I feel like it's going to be really weird. Less weird than you think. Less weird than I think. All okay. mainstream bands. I'm pretty bad with music in general. Ah. So we're going to say, I'm just going to throw out Metallica. No. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> You're going to love this. Uh, yeah, I get okay, it. Ready? Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. And Genesis. Genesis, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All three bands contributed to the movie's budget. And in fact, Pink Floyd's album, The Dark Side of the Moon, uh, a lot of the funds came from that because the band were such fans of the show that they would actually halt recording sessions to watch Flying Circus. That is funny. Yeah. It's it's wild. Um, huh. did you do you know why they used why they use the coconut gag? It, it was I, I I don't, but I'm gonna take my best guess. Okay. Uh, production wouldn't allow horses. Close. They couldn't afford real horses. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um. So I think that's all I got for you. Let's see. Those yeah. are pretty good. Yeah, that was a good one. I was reading that earlier going, oh, that's funny. The, uh, oh, here's here's one. Okay, so the, the God photograph, God, in the movie, do you know who that was and a picture of? I feel like I've seen that somewhere. Probably have in a lot of British movies. In a lot of British movies. It's got to be a member of the royal family, right? Even though they're not supposed to do that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, but no, it's an English. It's a 19th century English cricketer named W. G. Grace. W. G. Grace. But, but apparently, that photo has been used in quite a few British comedy skits, hmm. things like that. Anyway, yeah, it's pretty funny. So yeah, there it is. There's some comedy or some trivia to in the name of Matson. Um, yeah. Pseudo Matson. <laughs> fucking in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, you ready to rate this thing? I am. It's Matson's pick, so I'll go first since he's okay. not here. Um, oh my gosh! Like I don't know what to do with this movie because at the end of the day, like I see the the inherent value in the movie. It just doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? So like I'm torn, trying to give it credit for what it is and what it does, and the fact that. Monty Python, the comedic group, the troupe, can be funny, especially in microbursts of like actual skits or, you know what I mean? Like the short comedic bursts, they're really funny. It's it's when you start getting in these long form versions of the little, you know, serial skits that I'm just like, ah, it's just, especially when you have to tie them in some way together, like it it's a dangerous game. So I kudos to them, but I'm going to give it a one and a half. I just don't think it's funny. Like I just, even with all the moments that got me more and I say all, like it wasn't just like three, but with the moments that actually made me laugh this time that I've never really laughed at this movie before. Like I still found myself in a 90 minute movie going, fuck, is this over yet? And that's where, like, I struggle. And then it gets to the end, and I'm like, well, that was entirely unsatisfying, to your point. So it's like, yeah, I just can't go any higher than a one and a half. I, I feel like I'm giving it – if if we had done this 20 years ago, this probably would have barely gotten a point five. <laughs> but I did have a couple of legitimate belly laughs throughout this movie. So one and a half. If I can avoid watching this movie for the rest of my life, I will. Uh, so I have no intention of watching it again. I was pissed that I had to watch it this time. Uh, so yeah, that's one and a half for me. All right. I'm going to be pretty much the complete opposite spectrum. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm giving it a four. Nice. Um, and I mean, it, it loses because of the downhill slope that it takes, but there are so many good skits or skits that I enjoy. Like, and I love being able to almost see the parts where the cast is about to break yeah, because they push themselves too far, too many takes, whatever it is. And they're just about to 
burst um, because they can't hold it in much longer. Um, I will say that my favorite scenes or skits are the ones with Eric Idle in them. He, yeah. I think he's my favorite part of the entire Monty Python troupe. Yeah. Um, but anytime he's on the screen, I'm giggling, just busting up laughing. But the ending really is a huge letdown. Because it you, you and you can tell when they started to run out of ideas or they had trouble wrapping it up, they didn't know where to go next. They kind of kept going, maybe something will come out of it. And then, oh, nope, we're out of money. We didn't find the ending that we really needed to. So, here we go. This is what we're going to throw in there. Um, it's like, oh, that's such a letdown. But they still managed to find a way to kind of make it work with everything else that they were doing. Like, it's it feels out of place, but at the same time, look at the movie, the whole, it's not out of place because of how random it is that it still somehow fits. But I, I, I could tell where it was. So it gets docked for that. Yeah. So it's a four for me. They couldn't um, find another British band to fund. Yeah. The they rest couldn't of find it. another British band. <laughs> to go oh God. I love it. Yeah. There it is. I'm sure Matson would have given it pretty high, but he's not here. So fuck off. I don't care. Um, that's all it's getting. Well, yeah, we'll I, just give him, we'll just give it a score for him based on his last 30 scores, which puts it at a one. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> oh, no shit. Oh, God. Yeah, I knew I was coming in and going to be fighting a, a, a lopsided battle on this particular <laughs> film. Um, but yeah, there it is. Uh, you know, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. At me, don't at me. I don't care. I just don't enjoy Monty Python that much. But I don't enjoy sketch comedy that much. Like, some of it's good, some of it isn't. But I mean, we talked about Saturday Night Live before. I don't like Saturday Night Live movies for the same fucking reason. Anyway, there it is. Tell everybody where they can find us, Alec. Happy to. In keeping with the theme, we're going to keep this nice and short, just like the mm -hmm. films we are watching. So a special thank you to our current patrons who had a hand in picking the category, as well as picking the movies involved. Richard, Mel Brooks, and Alan Smithy with two e's um <laughs> thank you for your choice and your selection if you guys want to get involved in the selection process the way to do it is on patreon where we upload extra content and have votes that go out every single month for the topic that we're doing and then the movies within said topic um plus in addition to that i think we're up at about 150 posts of mm -hmm. additional content for you guys to sample if that's your thing um, with that, I will kick it back to our fearless leader, the king of crash, the titan of tire, a JJ. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Alec. Yeah, that's all I got for this movie. So with that, as always, we appreciate you tuning in. Catch you on the next one. Hasta la vista, baby. Cinematic out. Whoa!